for eternal fellowship with God. We are meant to be destroyed along with the devil. But God brought a last hope. And if we reject this last hope, that is the sin we have committed that has completely robbed us of the opportunity of being with God. And what is that? The word of God convicts us of of sin in the sense that if we reject Christ that is brought to us as our last hope it means that there is no more solution to our sin problem we definitely shall go to hell and we shall be cast into the lake of fire Our lesson today is baptism. Baptism. Our memory verse, Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Praise the Lord. Peter, after Peter had preached, and the Bible tells us that what he said pricked their hearts. And they asked him, now we have believed, what do we do? But they told them, repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Baptized, repent first and be baptized for the remission of your sins and ye shall have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is something commanded by Jesus for every believer to do it is what admits you into the church into the body of Christ so you can't say I will not be baptized that is unbelief before Christ came there was baptism John was baptized but the baptism of John the Bible makes us know it was the baptism of repentance but that of Jesus is the baptism of regeneration. The baptism of reawakening. The baptism that gives you new hope, new life, makes you completely new. The baptism of remission of all your sins so that you are now free. The outward washing away of the sins of your body. That is what baptism stands for. So if you want to be free from your sins, you need to be baptized. And baptism is by immersion. You are immersed in the water, completely gone down to the water. The water covers you up as one is buried in the grave. And so you are immersed in the water. And you come out in newness of life. Our text tells us that we are baptized into Jesus. We are baptized into his death. Let's, let's see that. Um, know ye not that so many of us, as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. For Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Five. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. It. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. 9. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. 
death, death had no more dominion over him. For, he, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Everything is done by faith. And that is why here the verse 11 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are baptized. We are baptized with Jesus. Praise the Lord. This is what the Bible is telling us. We are baptized into his death. And if you look at 1 Corinthians 15, if, if, if Paul tells us, if the dead rise not, why do we need to be baptized to a dead body that rises, that, that rise not? Then our, our hope is in vain. But there is something that makes us be baptized into his death. We gave up our sinful body to be married with the dead body of Jesus. To be united with his dead body. To be partaker with Christ of his death and of his burial. So that we are united with him in his death, in his burial. And our old man, our body, we have made our body to be married with his dead body. And we left the world. We left the world. We are dead from the world. Dead from the old, dead from our sinful life. We despise all our, despise our tastes and habits, forsook all, abandoned our old life that was a problem to us because there is something we had which made us took this decision. We forsook everything in the world and had nothing. Dead men in Christ, buried with him by baptism. And because we, we are united with him in his death. And we are buried together with him by baptism. And so we came out with him by the operation of God in newness of life. Um, until you understand what baptism means you may not be able to know what decision you took, the implication of what you have believed. Read Colossians 2, 11 to 13. Colossians 2, 11 to 13. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who had raised him from the dead. 13. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You see what baptism implies that if we be if we be dead or if we find ourselves in the likeness of his dead we shall also be we shall also live with him this is what Romans 6 tells us if you have undergone baptism or you are baptized unto somebody you do not go back from your baptism you cannot break it it's just like a covenant. If you take, um, let's see, First Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12. Read from verse 12 to 15. 
For as the body is one, and had many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. 15. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. Here is telling us that we have all been baptized into one body. So we now belong to, we are now members of one body. And you cannot say, after you are baptized into the body of Jesus, you cannot say, I am not a member of the body. Whatever that happens to you, the whole body suffers. So you, you, all, you are always a member of that body. And on any attempt to exclude yourself from that body will lead to very disastrous consequences. And that is why only those who hear, they understand the message, they believe, then they are baptized. They are baptized to show their oneness with Christ. When Christ came, he became united with us in our fallen condition. And he was hanged on the cross. And he carried out our sins. And he died and was buried. So for you to reflect your oneness with Christ, even as he did, you also have given up your body for him. And you are now dead with him through repentance. You have, you are now, you have changed your mind. You have given up your old man. You have forsaken the old life. In the world of sin, you are no longer there. You have given up yourself. You are dead to sin. And now you are buried with Christ by baptism. So that even your body, the sins of your body that are written in your body cannot be washed away in the water. And as Christ was raised with the glory of God after the resurrection, so you come out in the likeness of his resurrection. You come out in newness of life. You are completely new. No record of sin is um, levied on you anymore. You are in new creation. And that it is we that should have the understanding, have the belief of what we have become after baptism. And after you are baptized, you have been baptized into the body of Christ to be one because you have resurrected with Christ and been married with, with him. And that is why his spirit is now your spirit. The body of Christ has his own spirit. And that spirit is the Holy Spirit. And that is why it has to be in every believer. Because you have been baptized into one body by the same spirit. And when you find yourself in that body, foolish like the Bible say, oh, the dog has gone back to his vomit. What mighty thing, what privilege, or what a privilege is it that you are now called a member of the body of God? Or your body is now the temple of God. Your body is the body of Christ. What other thing do we really desire to have in this world that is greater than that? That everything that is in Christ is your own. Because you are you are his body, united with him. And his life is your life. And that is why you walk in his name. You are no longer yourself of the past. You are an offspring of God. You are a member of the body of Christ. And you know, if you cut yourself off from that body, you know what is going to happen to you. What, what hope have you again? And that is why 
Um, if you look at the baptism with which the people of Israel were baptized, and if you see what they did and what happened to them, then you can understand. The people of Israel were in bondage in Egypt, and Pharaoh wounded them, 